Alright everybody, Jay Hillix here again. Um, this video is just going to do a quick update on a continuing problem I'm having, <clears throat> which is the supercharger um, coolant pump shutting off on me. So as you guys know in the last video, <clears throat> I did have a leak on this hose here. And again, then in the last video I explained how that happened. But in a nutshell, that was my fault. <clears throat> in that last video, we also resolved that leak. And it still is uh, sealed up perfect. It's not leaking anymore. But I'm still having an issue with the pump turning off. So um, what's happening is, um, you know, I can sit here while, um, after doing a fresh um, recharge of the cooling system, I can turn on the key, engine off, leave the pump running for several minutes, uh, I think the most I've had it running is probably like around five minutes or so and everything seems to be fine So then I'll say okay, it's now I can continue on in this case. I'm still doing the tuning So I'll go ahead and start my tuning process again Well, then I'll go out there do my tuning and probably about I don't know Maybe 10 20 minutes into it uh, Watching the VCM scanner. I noticed my IET temps going up. So as for example, yesterday it was, I think, about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it was a really humid day. You know, it was probably, I don't know, it was, it was, pretty, it was pretty darn humid. Um, but I noticed the IET, IET temperatures, uh, or sorry, the intake air temperatures on the VCM scanner. You know, I think that day when I started tuning, it was around 99 degrees. Um, you know, I would expect, since this is a root style supercharger, it's not on. <clears throat> not unheard of for your temperatures and probably quite norm on a system like this for those temperatures to be around. To be around 130 degrees Fahrenheit, I would say that's probably between 100 and 130 degrees. That's probably about normal for a root style supercharger due to the nature of how root start roots style supercharger works. So I'm, I'm fine with that, you know, knowing that expectation, I'm fine, but once I start to see temperatures go above 130, so yesterday I was starting to see a climb to 140, 150, 160, that's pretty darn hot um, for intake arc charge temperatures. Uh, so I knew there was a problem going on, and the first thing that, I, that came to mind is this pump. So I pulled off on the side of the road in a safe area, I opened up the hood, and sure enough, noticed the pump was, again, off. So. At that point, I don't want to continue with, this, with the tuning because it's definitely going to impact my tuning, my, the tuning process. You know, you're going to be accounting for fueling and spark and all that based around uh, abnormal higher intake air temperature. So I need to resolve that before I can continue on. So I brought it back to the house and um, was like, well, maybe I have a leak somewhere still. Um, and I looked over all the connections, the heat exchanger connections. The reservoir connections you know the t filler here and i just had i could see no indication of anywhere that's leaking and the thing to remember here is it's not that i'm losing coolant you know my coolant level is is fine it's 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 not um getting low it's just air is being introduced into the system and then the pump the way it's designed you know and i'm just talking specifically these these uh, Z06 OE pumps, they shut off if they if any air comes in. So they could shut off within a couple seconds, they could shut off within a minute. Uh, anytime it detects air, it's just gonna turn off, which is a big problem. So I need to fix that. So I started really thinking about, you know, after doing a look over and it just, can, in my mind, being about 90% confident that I don't have a leak anywhere and that's not a source of air coming into the system. Um, without resorting to going out and purchasing a pressure tester to, to pressure test the system and just verify that, I started to think of, you know, what are ways that air can get into the system. And um, so what I start, what I did after that is I kind of took the rest of the night just to go over the service manual that GM has. So, they, so the official Z06 LT4 service manual they have a pretty in-depth process from the you know when the factory does a fill a vacuum fill procedure um, you know that what I've been showing is pretty much what they're doing there are some some major differences uh, with the type of equipment they're using and that's actually what I'm going to get into 
Um, but they also mentioned in the procedure to repeat the vacuum process at least two or two, three times. And that got me thinking, I was like, well, maybe, you know, the procedure I'm doing is introducing air into the system. So, you know, at first everything seems fine and maybe that's because I haven't run it long enough, but what I have noticed is there's some aeration as the pump turns on, which at first I thought that's just expected, you know, it's just because the pump is, is, is on, it's, it's moving fluid, it's just naturally going to aerate. But then I started thinking about it, I was like, well, the only way that you're going to see that aeration is if you have air in there. And, you know, I guess what I was expecting is the aeration eventually just clean itself out. But that's not happening, you know, this, when the pump's running, at any time it's running, you can definitely see the aeration. It's not, you know, it's not just cleaning, it's not just fixing itself. So I started thinking about ways that I'm introducing air into the system. So I was thinking maybe it's my, my, um, the lid on my T-filler, you know, maybe I need to get pressure chest on that, um, there's something wrong there, I thought maybe this cap I put on the vent line, maybe there's a leaking around there, but this thing is so darn tight on there, it's, I can't see how that's leaking. So I was like, okay, let me start all the way back to the beginning of when I actually do the fill procedure. Well, one thing just really struck out um, in my mind, and that's my fill hose here. So you can see this is, it's a pretty long fill hose. Uh, it's a relatively large diameter. And one thing I noticed when I thought back on how I'm filling this is this is not primed. So essentially what I mean by that is when I put the system under a vacuum and then I go and remove the Venturi system, I then attach this hose. And this hose does not have any coolant in it. So what's in there? Well, air is in it. And I suspect my hypothesis, I think, is what's happening is all this air in this hose is being introduced right into the system as soon as I crack this valve. So that's my the, the hypothesis I'm thinking is happening. And the reason why I'm pretty, I would say probably about 65, 70% confident that that's the issue is after reading the service manual, uh, I noticed the tool that GM uses is a lot different. Now, if you notice this tool, it has just this one port. And this port is to be used for the vacuuming, so evacuating the system, bringing it down to a vacuum, as well as then disconnecting the material system and connecting the, the charge uh, or the the, um, the fill tube. Well, on a, on a on other uh, types of vacuum tools like this, um, sometimes and specifically the GM tool, there's actually two ports. There, every design is going to be different. But I believe the one, if I remember correctly, from GM, there's also another port that comes off of here. So you have one side, one port that's used for your fill, and the other port is used for your Venturi system. And there's a ball check valve on both. And what GM is, when they when you look through the service man in their directions, what they're saying is when you get ready to fill, open up your uh, fill tube, and then, well, for, obviously, you have this turned off when you finish the, the vacuum procedure. And you have the other ball valve on the GM tool turned off. And then what they recommend is when you're ready to fill, um, you have this in your coolant source. Open the valve. So open the valve on our, on our fill. And then start to crack the valve open on the vacuum side. So the vacuum system is still running. It's still in play. And what that's doing is this evacuating any air that's in this hose or the hose that's on the GM tool and, and uh, letting it discharge out of the discharge tube just like you would when you're, when you're pulling this out of the vacuum. So what they say to do is you know continue to do that until fluid gets up to the top of the hose and then shut off the valve. The shut off the, the, uh, the, uh, the fill the fill ball check valve and then shut off your vacuum source. So basically what they did is they primed this fill before actually introducing coolant into the system. And I noticed that other tools, they have something similar. They might have two valves, or they might have one valve that kind of separates out in two that allows you essentially to do the same thing. Well, this U-View, specifically this U-View 55000, I think it is, doesn't have that. 
And I think that is the source of my problem because I am not addressing that. You know, in the UV instructions they have, whether that's the PDF online version they have or whether it's the sticker they have on the box there, they don't mention anything about priming this hose. Uh, and after doing some research online, I saw that that's what some of the complaints people had and, um, and also some of the remedies they were saying was to, uh, before attaching this fill hose, to dunk this in a, in a bucket of coolant uh, to get the coolant in there uh, and then shut off the valve so it doesn't drain out, keep the, this side in your coolant source and then connect it. And what they're doing is basically priming this in a manual way to get all that, to displace all the air in that hose with coolant so you don't introduce air in the system. So I'm pretty confident at this point, at least whatever it said, 65 or 70 percent confident that that's what I'm doing is I'm introducing pretty much a, a hose length, a volume of air that's equivalent to the volume that's in this hose into my supercharger cooling system. And then when I go out and tune, when I go out and tune, you know, as time progresses, just a, enough of with the turbulence the pump is causing and cause all this aeration, the pump finally shuts off because it says, hey, there's air here. So, um, without having to go and buy a new tool or maybe just, or even fab up some sort of uh, crazy port that allows me to do both of those, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do today in this video is I'm gonna try to, without draining my supercharger cooling system, because uh, GM in their, in their manual, they actually, in their steps, they say, hey, if you're during the fill process, if you ever notice that um, it stops filling, or, or if the pump, and they also have each on the pump on to circulate, and if, they, if the pump shuts off, they want you to pull this in a vacuum. Well, that also would cover the case where you already have coolant in the system, and you need to pull it in a vacuum again. So what I'm gonna do is leave coolant in the system, I'm gonna apply a vacuum again, like we did before, anticipating that coolant is gonna be coming out through the Venturi tube here. So I'm gonna have this in a separate bucket, and I don't want the coolant that's coming out of this to be going into my source bucket because that's gonna be all aerated, and I'm just gonna be introducing air into my source coolant, so defeating the purpose. So having, you know, whatever coolant needs to come out, let it come out, but the goal is to get that back into it, to get the system back into a vacuum with hopefully as much coolant as I can still in the system. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and shut off my vacuum source, but this time I'm gonna prime this fill hose. And how I'm gonna do that, and I've always wondered about this little coupler right here. You know, that's a pretty small coupler. And I guess you could use it on maybe reservoirs that uh, have a small diameter like that. But what's kind of curious about this is, you know, not only does it fit the, uh, the, the this here, this tool here, but the other side also fits these nipples just perfect. Um, see how it just goes right on there. And I wonder, and they, you know, they don't have this in the directions, but I'm, I have a sneaky suspicion that one way this can be used is to prime this hose. So actually before, I actually misspoke a little bit, before even putting this system to a vacuum, what I'm gonna do is um, go ahead and get a bucket set up, and get my coolant in there. Um, and just with this off the vehicle, I'm gonna put this under a vacuum and have this hose open. So basically it's gonna be pulling a vacuum uh, through, through here and into the, the fill hose here. And I'm gonna have the other end submerged in, a, in the bucket of coolant and allow it to evacuate all the air out of this hose. And just like what GM says, all the way up to the top here. So it's basically priming this hose. And then I'm gonna shut off the fill hose here. And again, trying to keep this end in the, in submerged in the liquid, in the coolant, the side out. That way I don't let any air uh, happen to get in here. <coughs> and at that point I should have a primed hose that has no air in it. So that way then when I pull the system down to the vacuum and I'm ready to fill, I can plug it into here, open it up, and the only thing this thing is going to get is is just straight coolant. Shouldn't be any air in there because there's no more air in here. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do now, and I'll let you guys know um, how it goes. So I'll see you in a, in a few minutes. Okay, 
so I have the process complete. The process went quite well. I have the pump running now. It's been running for oh, about a minute. I'm thinking I'm gonna run it as as long as I can wait for. Hopefully, at least half an hour. That should reproduce the issues if um, I was out tuning and it would turn off because of the aeration. So I might need to hook up a trickle charger to my battery just to make sure it doesn't drain it. But anyway, so what I did was I did not uh, drain this system. So it, wa it was in, s in a state where uh, it was when I ended tuning where as soon as I turned on the ignition, like within a couple seconds, the pump turned off. So all I did was um, I first went over to um, where my containers are. So down there, you can see them. Um, grabbed a large bucket, emptied uh, a gallon of uh, was it a gallon? Yeah, a gallon of coolant into a larger container, um, and then I put my fill hose at the very bottom of that contain of that bucket, and then I just took a clamp and just clamped just slightly on the hose against the bucket side, so that way it kept the fill hose in position. And then I hooked up the um, Venturi system, brought it down to a vacuum, which basically primed the the filling hose. Once I did that, I shut off the valves, just like I talked about before, pushed that off to the side, came over here, removed this cap, and then just put the uh, vacuum system right on here. And then I had another bucket, so a totally separate bucket from my coolant source bucket, placed it over here on this brace, put my Venturi tube up in there, because I knew that some coolant was going to come out, and then just let the thing run. Run it had it took about um, I don't know about 10 minutes probably. Um, you know, as you could see it burping out air during the process, so I just let that run as long as it needed to uh, while it was spitting out the coolant. You know, that's what that other bucket was for was to capture that. So I ran that on probably about 10, maybe 15 minutes. Um, until I had all the air completely evacuated out of the system. I uh, left it in, left that alone. So basically what I did was turned off the ball valve on the on the vacuum system, removed my Venturi hose, and then brought over my source bucket of coolant and hooked that in and just let it... Uh, so it was actually full, um, and that was mainly just due to the vacuum uh, bringing the coolant up into this neck. But I went ahead anyways and hooked up my source coolant to it, um, and then it brought it back down to about zero. Uh, and then I still left it at that point, so I still had everything, the ball valve still open, ready to flow coolant. I went inside the truck, turned on the ignition, again engine off, just to let this pump kick on, let it start circulating um, the coolant, and then to have a source of coolant to bring in in case it needed more. So everything was still underneath the vacuum at that point. The pump was still working underneath the vacuum. <coughs> um, let that run for, I don't know, a couple seconds to about a minute until I could tell that it wasn't going to draw any more coolant in. So at that point, it was it was really full, about where it's at right now. Um, so then I shut down, shut off the ignition, um, removed my hoses, uh, cleaned those up, put those away, and then came over here and then just cracked open the valve again. Uh, at that point, you know, the only air that's going to be in there is at that fill level. Uh, removed everything, put my cap on, and washed everything down, and then after that, uh, turned the ignition back on. So I'm going to continue, like I said, continue to let this running, let this run. Uh, it would be good to let it run for at least 30 minutes. If this thing's still running, if the pump hasn't shut down by then, then I would think it's safe to assume that I'm good. Um, yeah, looking at it, you know, I did see some, still some aeration, but it definitely didn't look as bad as before. Before, it looked like if you're at Niagara Park and just, you know, looking at the waterfalls and just the churning of that water hitting the rocks, you know, the turbulence due to the pump and just all the air in there. So I think it's definitely cleaned it uh, up a lot better. A lot of the air has been removed. Uh, so hoping since I evacuated the air of the system, I primed that input, pump, input hose, the coolant fill hose, I'm hoping that there's, if there's any air in there, it's very, very, very minimal and not enough to kick off the pump. So, yeah, um, I guess that's some information to share to you folks. That For me, this has been a learning experience. You know, this project is the first time I use this vacuum fill system. 
So, um, you know, learning this thing as I go and hopefully he's helping out anybody else that's kind of in the same position. But um, I'm going to go ahead and end it for now and then I'll just maybe follow up later if uh, to let you know how things are going. So see you guys and catch you on the next video.